morning everybody so we're into our last kind of day or two now in Puerto Rico so today we've hired a car again but this time we're going to visit a rum distillery in the north called Arahushas I think that might be the pronunciation it's probably wrong and we're going to visit the town of Fergas they aren't too far apart so they're both in the north of the island not too far from Terro where we went last time and after that depending on time we might go to the rock pools depending on the weather because I don't think the weather's as good up in the north or whatever I've got a couple of suggestions off somebody Sharon Den so thanks Sharon so we'll see how we we'll get on for time but definitely Arahushas we're going to do the rum distillery tour and we're going to go to Fergus. Only a two minute walk and on the street of Corona Cedral is the rental company in Auto. So this is where we got our car for the day we just hired a car for just the one day as we were only here for one week and we paid 51 euros for the day we just went for the cheapest option but as you can see there there are plenty of other options so when you come to pick the car up they'll take you to the car they'll show you all the controls where everything is indicators air conditioning radio and gps they'll always take you around the outside of the car as well just in case there is any kind of current damage to the car so just so you can check it over so that that's caused any damage to the car so with the car domestics out the way, it's time to leave the resort of Puerto Rico and head north on Gran Canaria's main motorway, the GC1, heading up towards Las Palmas for our first destination, which is Arucas. So as you'll see when we get there, the sat-nav <laughs> kind of took what off a totally wrong way, but we'll explain that when we get to Arucas. eventually found the Arahushas distillery because my sat nav on the car was going to have one a ferry to I think somewhere in northern Europe <laughs> so we probably would it. never have been back so we don't know where it was taken we so we ended up in Las Palmas I ended up using Google Maps and then we got lost everywhere so it's been an adventure getting here it's taken about two hours when it should have taken about just over an hour but never mind so this is the distillery here which has been on the island since 1884 it was open on the 9th of august so they've been obviously making rum here called arujas and it's apparently made from sugar cane so that's quite interesting so apparently you can do a tour in here i think which lasts about an hour and a half 70 minutes or something like that so we're going to go inside i think if I'm not mistaken from what I read on the website it's seven euros entry and it's free parking so when you come in there's just like a little button you've got to press and there's a barrier that lifts up so we're gonna go in here we'll go and show you around and see what it's like in here Missed the start of the two acts that were just starting up, so we missed the little end. But just on the outside, this is the sugar cane they use to make the rum. So we're just about to go into the distillery as well. The Arahugas distillery is the oldest rum maturing bodega in Europe. In 1935, Alfredo Martin Reyes reopened the old factory of San Pedro, originally inaugurated back in 1884, but dedicated this exclusively to the production of rum. This bodega for the aging of the rum is a true temple of the culture surrounding the popular drink, twinning Gran Canaria with the Caribbean. Here in Bodega One, some famous celebrities have left their signature imprinted on the barrels, including Johan Cruyff, Tom Jones, Placido Domingo, Montserrat Cabelli, and Julio Iglesias have all left their mark on the barrels. <laughs> Yeah, you've got oak barrels, which give it more of an oaky taste and make it lighter. Whereas here, you've got darker barrels, which make the room darker as well. So all give it different tastes. And then back there was like 
they were all like distilled from like what was it 12 14 40 year ago yeah. so during this tour you'll get to enjoy the facilities of the actual distillery you'll be given a full history with the tradition and what work is carried out here so besides explaining the process of how the rums are made, you are actually getting to see one of the oldest rum cellars in Europe, which is actually made up of 4,308 American oak barrels. This tour will take you through the history of the rum in the Canary Islands, which does take about 50 minutes and consists of five stages. So this is the origin of Arahukas. There'll be a visit to the cellar where the aging process is carried out. You'll learn about the rum process and, and visit the mill itself. Then you'll see the fermentation and distillation rooms. Single cask 2005 Palo Cortado. This rum has a second aging 15 months in Palo Cortado barrels. Palo Cortado is a famous wine from the south of Spain, Andalusia. And that means that has a really, really lovely aroma and taste. This is a really mix between rum and wine. And also is the strongest one in our distillery with 45% alcohol. And it's really strong, believe me. <laughs> The final part of the tour is the bottling plant and after this you'll actually get to taste some of the rums so let's go and taste them. So the tour of the distillery is done. I'd only actually took about 40 minutes but we're gonna go and do some tasting now so Jai's driving for the rest of the day. Married for seven years, we're gonna get four rums. I will serve them Pure. Don't forget the 40 degrees of cold. I continue with these three because I never I never said nothing about them. We use these three in cocktails because they are really junk products. They have a really strong alcohol taste. It's carta de oro, carta blanca, fresier, white rum with the strawberries. Also, I recommend you maybe to drink them mixed as long drinks. For example, with cola, Coca-Cola, that is the classic Cuba Libre. This with Fanta Lemon, and this you can drink with Prosecco, Sprite, or you can make lovely strawberry mojitos. <laughs> smells like proper rum. This is in in your world rum. It's actually really nice. It's, um, it's got like a sweet taste. I don't like the smell of that. Lemon and chocolate. Oh, I'll try the lemon one. I'll try the chocolate. Sweet taste, yeah. Lemon, better than that one. Oh, yeah. That's 18 years. Hot bird top, it's still kicking in. Fire. Oh, that's nice. This is the lemon. Oh, that's lovely. That's, that's like a liqueur, that. Really nice. So this is a chocolate rum. So it looks a bit like a Bailey's. I'm just taking little sips, by the way. Oh, it's lovely. Try that one. So we've now got a toffee one, so this is probably only about 17%. The chocolate one was 17% as well, which is beautiful, really nice. Mm -hmm. oh, that was super. 
It's very tough here. Yeah. Yeah. It's too creamy for me. It is nice though. So this is a honey one. Honey one, yeah. This is more honey. Yeah. Oh, how sweet is that? That one's like a liqueur as well. I kind of taste any alcohol on that. That's lovely. It smell, it smells nice. What's this one? So we've got a... It's a guava with mango. <laughs> It'll be nice with some um, spritz in it. So that's a banana one. It's See? It's quite nice. Maybe it's because I've had that, it's like. That's what you say. So these are the last two. Quite a bit in these glasses. It smells like an um, IPA. <laughs> Really good ones, yeah. Definitely worth driving. If I wasn't driving, I would have knocked them all back. So come on a bus to have you do this, so you can have, you can have a good drink. So that was Willy Wonka's rum factory. <laughs> the chimney reminds us of Willy Wonka's. And it was a bit like Willy Wonka's at the end with all them rums, wasn't it? Could have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was really good. I enjoyed that, I thought it was, it was really good. The two hours short I hadn't expected. I'm sure I had read something like 70 minutes, but that's probably included the rum tasting. I really enjoyed it. So you get to learn obviously how the, from the sugar cane right the way through to the barrel and the rum. Uh, <laughs> You've had too much rum. I kind of think straight. There's loads of barrels in there. Like I, I'm sure I read there was like 2,800 and something barrels. I'm sure I read somewhere in there that said 4,000 barrels. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was quite a large group as well. And some of it did get a bit annoying with some of the people in there who were just talking all the way through it. But yeah, yeah, yeah that, was that was a bit, yeah. And people were like hanging back and, because you didn't really get that much time to look at stuff, I thought. Like, you're kind of just whisked yeah, through. Yeah, just this is it and then, I... Yeah, I think we've probably come just at the wrong time because they're going to start the distilling process I think next week so it's all to do with the sugar cane so they get the sugar cane planted like last year for this year and then that shouldn't like be fully what do you say, how would you say fully grown until ready to harvest, yeah ready to harvest so they're going to start on March the 5th I think she said so obviously if it had been that way you would have seen them bottling it all up and putting it in the barrels and all that kind like of stuff. Like all the process. Yeah, because they're just cleaning all the machinery at the minute. But some, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them rooms were lovely as well. Um, like the liqueur. the liqueur ones were beautiful, really nice. Some of them you couldn't even taste the alcohol in them. But I mean, even one of the, I think it was the dark room, the 18 year one I had was really nice as well. Um, nice with a cork. Yeah, it would be, it would be. <laughs> I don't really like it. No. But no, I enjoyed that. I thought it was, I, I really thought it was good. What did you think of it? Yeah, I know it was really good. Yeah, it had, uh, Interesting. Interesting. It's good I'm to see. not a rum yeah, connoisseur. Fan, so, uh, well, yeah, no, no, it was really nice. It's good. So how many Jackies out of five are you going to give it? 4.8, I would 4. give it. Yeah, it's worth a, worth a yeah, little Yeah, definitely, visit. definitely. Once you find the place. I mean, it's easy enough to find it just our sat nav rubbish on the car. But yeah, definitely recommend it. But come up on a bus. <laughs> So you can, because you get, the, honestly, you, get you, quite you do, bigger, yeah. and if you think you only pay seven euros each to come in, and you probably get more than your money's worth just from the rooms, because the yeah. big measures, obviously I was just having tiny sips because I've got to drive. If I had, a, like, not been driving, I would have been chinning a lot of them. No. Empty glasses. Ah, there would have been, yeah. So, yeah. empty glasses. Aye, yeah. So, yeah, make a point of coming here if you're on the island. Okay, we're gonna now move on to Fergus, which I don't think is too far away. So we're gonna go and have a little look around there and we might grab a spot of lunch when we're there as well. So 13 kilometers west 
of Las Palmas is a town in the northern part of Gran Canaria called Fergas. So Fergas has a population of 7,628 and was founded in 1488. They also bottled the water for the islands here in Fergus. That's also known as the balcony of the north coast of Gran Canaria. So you're just looking out over the Atlantic right behind with you. And you can see it's really, really rough out there today. But the reason we're here is because we've come to see some waterfalls which we've seen before we came here last time. And we went to the wrong town thinking it was <laughs> Fergus, but obviously it was Terol. We thought the falls were in Terol. So we're going to have a look here. It's meant to have a lovely church and then all the water falls cascade down up towards the church. So we're going to go and try and find them now. So just behind here must be the town hall. And then obviously looking over this way, that's the Atlantic. So apparently on a clear day, which today is not, you should be able to see Tenerife from here and Fuerteventura, so I'd imagine they're probably going to be over in this direction. But it's quite misty over that way today, so we can't really see it. So this square marks kilometre zero, or the starting point for a network <coughs> of footpaths and trails that form part of the town's history. So this is where the an ancestors of the town walked or lived. And along the way you can learn about the privileged natural surroundings on which the town of Fergus proudly stands. So here you can see part of the heritage, traditional ethnographical and cultural elements spread all around the municipality's terrain, plus its flora and fauna. These walks can be done in circular routes and they're designed for hiking with both start and finish in the town of Fergus. Okay, so it's really cold here actually, <laughs> really cold. You wouldn't think, I think it was only about three or four mile away from the rum place and it felt so much warmer then than it does here but I think we're a bit higher up. So it's, it's just got that nip in the air and it's, it's quite windy, windy isn't it? So that makes it cold. Anyway, this is Paseo de Gran Canaria. So this is the 30 metre waterfall behind which cascades down. We've got these lovely colourful chairs all the way up. It would look so much better if it was sunny. Unfortunately, we haven't got the sun today, but I mean, it's still it's beautiful. It's still beautiful, it's lovely. And then once you get up to the top and pass a waterfall, you've got like different models of all the Canary Islands, which like commemorate them all basically. So yeah, I've taken some drone footage to give you a better look. So yeah, you go. So what do you think of these waterfalls I brought you to? Uh, yeah, very, nice, very pretty, yeah, yeah lovely, really nice. gorgeous. Yeah, it's nice. There's even like a little fountain here in the middle, in the roundabout. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's like a water fountain. It's not switched on at the minute, but yeah, it's really nice. Really nice. We made a good job of it. I think it's only been here since 1995, from what I could gather up there. So it hasn't actually been here that long in hindsight, but it's uh, it made a really nice job of it. It's really nice. So what would you give the waterfalls? Five out of five. Five out of five for the waterfalls. It's worth a Yeah, it's worth a drive. Worth a yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth a look. Should we go and find something we need somewhere? Do yeah, it's worth a I don't know if we'll find anything here because it's quite a small place, but we'll have a look around and we'll see if I can find anything just to snack on for now, eh? Yeah. Let's go.
So we stopped at a little place right at the bottom of the waterfalls called La Bar Fuente. So it just looks like a tiny little house from the outside, but when you come through, you come to the back and it's like a little bit of a restaurant. It's still not massive, but it looks like the menu's limited. So I'd happen to like choose from kind of the main menu. So I've gone for meatballs and a homemade sauce. So chat has gone for marinated pork meat with fries. I'm getting some bread to start. I'm just getting a coke and a fan there. So we've got like, uh, it's quite a big roll and we've got some alio oli with it. It's um, really juicy, meaty, yeah. It's, um, I'm assuming like pan fried, yeah. But it's um, lovely. I don't know what it's marinated in. It's got like a hint of it now, but chips look good. How about homemade chips? Chips are good. I've got some meatballs with a homemade sauce. And I've got some chips as well. I'm going to try these first. Sauce is nice. So I'm not sure what meat it is. I think it's, it looks like pork. Probably like pork. Oh yeah. Oh, that really tastes good. like a minced pork meat. Pop our meatballs. The sauce is lovely. I'm not sure what it is. It's a little bit like um, a little bit like that sauce we had yesterday. Put in my gun. The potatoes. Oh, the potatoes. Yeah. Good job. Uh, but no, it's yeah. good. It's good. So that was Bala Fuente. And it was actually, it was, it was all right, wasn't it? That was a bit like, oh. And the stuff was taken off that we wanted, but actually it was pretty good. That's right at the bottom of the Cascading Waterfall. Literally right at the bottom, across the road. It just looks like a little house. It's like a TARDIS. It looks tiny at the front, but you go through and there's just that little bit at the back. So what did you make of the food in there? Uh, it, was, it was nice, yeah. Oh, just fine. a nice little portion. I was five, four and a half. Four and a half, yeah. I'd probably, I'd probably agree with that. So I think it was, it was decent. All right, right. We'll change our plans because we're going to go to some natural rock pools, but it's absolutely freezing, and the weather's horrible, and the sea's crashing in, so it probably wouldn't be the best idea today. So we're going to go to the island's largest botanical gardens, which is about half an hour away from Fergus. The Vieira y Clavio Botanical Garden is located in the village of Tafira, which is just a few kilometres from Las Palmas. So this botanical garden was named after the Spanish naturalist and botanist Jose Vieira y Cavillero. This scientist significantly contributed to the scientific knowledge of the Canary Islands. The mission of this garden was to collect not only the endemic plant species of the entire Canary Islands, but also the entire Macronesia, including the Azores and Cape Verde Islands, along with Madeira. This botanical garden is one of the world's most important scientific institutes. It was founded in 1952 by the Swedish botanist Eric Ragnar Sventenius. In 1974, another important Canarian botanist, David Bramwell, became the director. The garden also includes science libraries, a herbarium, a seed bank, museum exhibits and a library. National botanical conferences are also held here and the garden is an important centre for the conservation of many endangered plant species in the Canary Islands. You'll find several species that have already become extinct in the wild. The garden itself covers an area of almost 27 hectares. It's located in the deep valley and numerous terraces suitably mimic the natural conditions for many endemic species that are grown here. In the garden, you will also find laurel forest and sand dunes. So another holiday, another steep climb. It's starting to become a thing, this now. Twin dragon trees that way. <laughs> So we're doing the twin dragon climb, a walk, and <laughs> there's absolutely nothing to stop you from falling. And it's not the biggest, it's just like walking on a wall. So these are the twin dragon trees, one there, one there. So you okay, you pull out the ground, it's like potato. It's, 
That's what it reminds us of, the top. It's like Yucca. There's a viewpoint just next to the uh, Twin Dragon trees as well, so you can look out across the valley. So let's have a look. On the map it actually looks quite big. When we start walking around Jackie had said, it doesn't look that big. But then when you're up here and you see how the scale of it, it is actually quite big. There's like people right along this path where like at the viewpoint, you keep walking, you can actually see people like on the side of the mountain there. So it does actually stretch quite a way. The one thing to note about this place, which we didn't mention before, is that the entry is free. Parking's free as well, so you can just come and go as you please. So the car park's just off the main road. You come in, you just pull in. There's a little hood at the front, and I think it's just like security. I think it was saying last entry is five o'clock, and I believe it shuts at seven o'clock. So if you all want to come later, around five o'clock would be the last time you'd be able to come. said before when we were at the uh, the two dragon trees I didn't actually realize how big it was but we didn't realize it stretches even further so we've kind of been up on the cliff and just kept walking and it just keeps going and going and we've just actually hit a point where you can actually go up again even further I think it's called the windy path it's absolutely massive <laughs> was the botanical gardens of the canaries what did you make of that massive wasn't it massive yeah Huge. it was really is nice just a nice walk around nice and chilled out in there it's nice and quiet and peaceful but like i say free entry so you know if you're on a budget it's worth doing come and just have a walk around we've been in there quite a while and there's stuff we've missed i mean you do you probably do need a map we've just kind of wandered around a bit aimlessly really but you could probably spend, I reckon, a good four or five hours in there just going around and looking at everything. Depends if you want it. Depends. Depends. Well, exactly, yeah. Because there is like a cafe restaurant type place up at the top of the hill. So it's just like, as you go past the dragon trees, you keep going up a little bit further and it's just at the top of the hill there. So it's probably quite nice because you could be like looking over the valley here as well. Yeah. You say it'll probably be nicer on a sunny day, but in a way it's been nice to walk around when it's been yeah it's been all right yeah so you're not like sweating and dripping and whatever it's, it's just been quite nice so what would you give the botanical gardens give it 4.8 4.8 yeah like i say it's, it's a good free attraction you know it's, it's absolutely massive like i didn't expect it to be quite as big as that give that a look if you're over in the north of grand canaria so what have you made of what days ago uh, apart from the weather, it's been good. It's been a nice little um, exploring mm -hmm. day. And um, it's, it's probably waterfalls that I didn't see last time. Yeah, the with fur gas. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a good little day, and um, we've ticked off a couple of things that we wanted to see last time. We didn't get time. So this is kind of we've just concentrated on the north part of the island. It would be nice to get back into the mountains again, but it would have been pointless today anyway because the weather's yeah, been, it's been rubbish. Cloudy, so you can see, like, right in the centre of the island, it's just been covered in cloud. Mm -hmm. And there is a difference in the north to the south weather wise. Like, back in Puerto Rico, it's been red hot. And we've seen people saying that it's been really, like, cold and rain here all week and windy. And even Mas Palomas, I've seen a picture on Facebook yesterday. You could see the sand blowing over the walls. Whereas we've been. We haven't had any wind no, hardly ever. This has been last couple probably of days. one first day that's been. Yeah, like, but again, it's because we're in the north rather than the south. So, anyway, that's the end of this one. And we're coming to a close on our time here in Grand Canaria, too. There'll probably be one more video after this, which will be we're going to revisit a few places that we went first time round, restaurants. We'll sum up our week here on our second visit to Grand Canaria. <laughs> Oh God. 
So if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave your comments, let us know what you thought of these places we've been to today and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the last episode. Bye! Bye. Did he just Did he just gently do it? <laughs> yeah. What else can you do? <laughs>